Okay, hello and welcome to Thriving Together. That's what we're doing today. I'm your host, Susan Crowley, and my guest today is Gay Porter from the uh, Explorers Lifelong Learning Institute in Salem. But before we get right to, to Gail, to Gay, <laughs> Uh, let me say a little bit about thriving together. You know, when I think of thriving together, I think of aging well. And I think of what one, what we know about uh, what helps us age well. And there are just several things. You know, there is taking care of your physical health and, and moving, exercising. There is uh, paying attention to your cognitive health that requires blood to your brain from exercising. And, you know, it requires some things I think that we'll end up talking about today, you know, uh, keeping your brain active doing things. You know, it's also about um, engaging and socializing and having connections with people. And it's about paying attention to your psychological health and having a healthy perspective about aging. So with that said, let's Go ahead and talk, Gay, about the Explorers Institute. Tell us what it is. Explorers is a lifelong learning program um, affiliated with Salem State University. Uh, we, our members are 50 years and older. And um, for us, the two most important parts of our program are learning new things and the second part is learning together, being with your peers, enjoying the socialization, enjoying being together, and celebrating our age. Great, great. And what, what kinds of courses, you know, would somebody find over there? We have a two-semester program, one in September for the fall and one in March for the spring. We offer, uh, this coming fall, we're going to offer 27 courses covering a wide variety of academics from Plato to foreign languages uh, to lifestyle courses like wine tasting and uh, classical music, poetry, and um, alternative medicine. Whatever subjects interest us, we seek to offer those courses. So, Can you say a little bit about who teaches these courses? And we're, all, we're an all-volunteer organization. We have one paid employee, and she's our office manager. Everyone else is a, is a retiree, mostly, occasionally not. We always have one course or more a year presented by a Salem State professor um, who uh, facilitates a course offering six other areas by other professors. Other than that, we're all uh, retirees who still enjoy teaching, who still uh, delve into our subject areas, and we love sharing what we know. <laughs> And uh, the learning together, I imagine there's variation in whether they're a lecture course or they're some kind of more of an interactive talking together kind of course. Some courses are discussion. Some are reading and discussion. Some are participatory. Like we have a film course. In the film course, you watch the film at home. And as all people who love films know, they love to talk about them. So then the participants in that course come together with the presenter and they discuss the film that they have on, on tap for that, uh -huh. for that session. Uh -huh. Well, and what are some other popular courses that uh, you're think that maybe they are, they've been or they're coming in the fall? The history courses are always popular with people. Um, the um, the politics and the culture courses, culture of, of the United States, uh, the politics of the United States, particularly this being an election year. Um, people love to discuss um, politics. Uh -huh. Well, and I imagine 
the people that come to the uh, institute get to know each other, and uh, it's kind of a social thing as well. It is. is. That... Friendships are formed. Many courses have a break, a t give a 10-minute break, or people will. People can sign up for as many as eight courses per semester. Uh -huh. And so if you have two courses in a day, chances are there's a lunch break. And, um, and we foster that mm -hmm. togetherness. The people gather around tables and they, yeah. they discuss what they've just heard or they, they talk about their daily lives or um, they meet and greet. Uh huh. And what about um, what's your facility like? Uh, and yeah, it's a little bit about about that. Does that facilitate what you're talking about? The sitting around the table and talking together, or we is that in We have a common area with about um, seven or eight tables for four or five people, and we have um, a li a small library. And we have um, three smaller classrooms and a larger lecture room that could seat up to 60. Uh -huh. um, we remote, we have in-person courses. Uh, depending upon the uh, wants of the presenter, so some people prefer, or the course is designed yeah. so that it facilitates small group discussion and in only in, they're only offered in person. Other courses, uh, more on the lecture style, are offered in person and remoted out. Uh -huh. And then on Fridays, we remote only. Those are courses that are only offered remotely. We have um, courses about, on Friday, usually about um, politics, and one very popular course is about the Supreme Court, controversial My. decisions of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Do they ever get into arguments in those classes? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not so much. Not so much. Okay. <laughs> uh, because they're really discussing uh, not how the decisions will go, uh -huh. but how what the decisions are. Uh -huh. Sometimes in the current events class, ah. that's when people of different points of view sometimes uh, tough it out uh -huh. conversationally. Uh -huh. Well, I imagine that spices things up a little bit. And... <laughs> Of course, we're older, but we're not. we do have... we still maintain our opi opinions. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, good. And then, um, do you? You said you had two semesters. Do you do anything in the summer or between semesters? We have uh, two periods uh, of two month periods in um, in January and February. And then again in July and August when we offer once a week lectures uh -huh. open to the public. They're an hour, an hour and a half. They are in person and remoted. And um, we offer them to our members, to prospective members, and to the general public. And sometimes for people who are a great distance from us, who are uh -huh. interested in uh -huh. those subject areas. Well, and how does one then find out what your course offerings are and how that all works? We publish catalogs, um, and there will be a new one coming out uh, next month in July. And then we also publish one in January for the spring. Uh, you can request a catalog from our office at 10 Federal Street in Salem uh, or drop by even better. Uh -huh. We love it when people <laughs> stop in to pick up a catalog and maybe pop into a course and see what it's like. Um, it's a friendly atmosphere, uh -huh. and we welcome guests. Uh -huh. Well, you know, and I have to admit, you know, that, you know, I've been a member, you know, at Explorers, and uh, prior to my move here to Massachusetts, 
about two years ago now, I was out here visiting my son, and I popped in and uh, sat in on a book discussion group, you know, that was great. And I really, I really thought that the environment was inviting, you know. And, you know, I taught, you know, uh, some college coursework, and I thought that the rooms were surprisingly well equipped you know, with, you know, the ability to do all kinds of different, you know, PowerPoints and, and, and all that kind of thing. So it was, it was quite delightful. We, um, we try to welcome people in. I, I've been a member of Explorers for 14 or 15 years now, and I really joined because when I first retired, I was doing adjunct work for the university. Ah. Um, but other than that, and and um, distance consulting, I didn't see enough people, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. I joined um, Explorer certain shortly after retiring, and it's inevitable that when you open yourself up to people, others will open themselves up to you. We all have the same needs to varying degrees, but we all have needs for other human content. Uh-huh, uh-huh, indeed, indeed. Um, let's see, what else could we talk about? Tell us a little bit more about some other courses that you have. Other courses, we have a writer's group. I, I teach a writer's group. We encourage our members to um, offer a course in their subject areas because uh -huh. we have retired lawyers, we have retired engineers, we have retired physicians, mm -hmm. and um, one of the physicians ha had a hobby of collecting wines, uh -huh. and, um, and I encouraged him to offer a wine course last semester, and it was excellent. This semester he's continuing on in a different vein. Another physician is a classical musician, and so uh, he gives us insight into the, the world of classical mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. conducting, mm -hmm. who knows what the conductor does. And so one of the most important things about being older is learning something new. And sometimes in our professional lives, we haven't had time to pursue interests other than our professional interests. Mm -hmm. And that's where Explorers really flourishes because you really get yourself, um, it, you get yourself more, more open to other subject areas mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and it really, it really uh, helps. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. tell me that once they become involved, uh, they enjoy being able to get up and out, be out with people, and people who teach also learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a dual, uh, it's a dual uh, participation that you can teach uh -huh. and you learn and you learn from other people. Uh -huh. who have had vastly different lives. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, and I will say that I, uh, you know, I participated for a semester and did a number of courses that I enjoyed, and then I threw my hat in the ring, you know, to, to teach, you know, a course related to saging, and actually our, um, our Thriving Together last week um, was about, you know, Saging, you know, and uh, that psychosocial, spiritual aspect of uh, feeling, thinking about aging, you know, in a more conscious way, and figuring out what. Well, there, while there are takeaways, there are also ads, and so you know, sometimes as we age, we get, uh, we can't do all the things we used to do, so we want to figure out what how we can do those as we age and also, like you were mentioning, adding new things. And of course, new things for your brain is even better than doing the same old thing, you know, because it stretches your, you know, your, your brain cells, your neurons. Learning new things 
is an important part of Explorers. And also, um, learning how to be an active participant in your life. Uh -huh. um, it, the, we have had courses about aging and about end of life. You've offered a course about end of life. And um, one might think, well, that's a dreadful subject. But that's a subject that we all <laughs> must face. <laughs> And, and that's another part of Explorers, uh -huh. that we're all facing the inevitability uh -huh. Uh -huh. Of, of end times, but we're doing it in a joyful, productive way. Yeah, it sounds very vibrant. It sounds like it absolutely fits the idea of thriving together, you know, so that's, that's really delightful. Um, so if somebody wanted to... So you said that the catalog is coming out for fall semester pretty soon, and then those courses that, that are going to be offered will be available uh, in this uh, catalog. And I suppose somebody, and we will put on the uh, email address and the internet address and all that stuff, you know, in the uh, final production of this show. Um, so there are several avenues where people can either have a catalog mailed to them or they can go online and see what's offered right away. Uh, or, as you said, you know, stop by, because I do think that, you know, if you saw the environment, you know, that, uh, that, that they would be uh, excited about that. And, of course, you know, if you've got some interest and you want to teach something, we, that would be probably pretty welcome as well. That. <laughs> we always welcome people with new subject area, uh, with new subject, subject yeah. areas, um, and people become members. We uh, have a membership policy. You can become a member of our group for one semester or and for two semesters at a, at a slightly reduced um, uh, membership fee. And um, when you are a member, you can take eight courses each semester, which each it's course hot. meets generally from four to six times over the course of the semester. Although the writer's group, the book group, the language classes all go week by a uh, book group once a month, and that mm -hmm. goes through the year. Mm -hmm. And the other classes that I mentioned, um, Spanish, and mm -hmm. um, it, there are two Spanish classes in the writer's group, they go through uh -huh. the semester. Uh -huh. But then there are a lot that are kind of uh, four, maybe four to six four weeks, to six some, week something classes. like that. And so... If you're heading south for the winter, you know, you could attend classes. You could find something that would be interesting from, you know, in, when, when does the semester start? Is it September and then in March? September and March, okay. And if you're heading south, you can remote <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, courses as well. We have people who, do, snowbirds, uh -huh. who do that. Uh -huh. um, and, of course, the intercessions are... Uh, Wednesdays at 10 o'clock, every Wednesday during the summer months of Jan uh, July and August, and then in the winter months of February, uh, January and February, every Wednesday, a different topic. Uh -huh. And that's the one that people who are interested in checking out, explorers, and, and it's open to the public. Yes, it is. And so it's a matter of getting the... So is that on Zoom? It's... That's, that your, uh, those are all, there is one class on our current s schedule that will only be remoted, but all others are in-person and remote, uh -huh. simulcast, okay. remote. Okay. Um, but the intercession ones, are those all remote? They're simulcast, in-person Oh, there's some in-person? Yeah. Okay, all right, well, very good. Okay, let's see. Um... What else uh, should people know about Explorers? Do you do any um, excursions? Uh, no, <laughs> not <laughs> not currently. But in in the um, in this past year, in the last two years, we have sponsored three classical music concerts uh, at Salem State Recital Hall, free to the public, 
where we've brought in musicians from the Boston Philharmonics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to do chamber music, classical concerts. And we have collaborated with other community organizations, uh -huh. the Community Center in Marblehead, the Swampscott Senior Center, and now we're working on a new collaboration with a lifelong learning group in Dorchester, England. Oh my, we'll and say a little bit more about that. How did that so come about? That came about when one of our members uh, traveled to England and asked to participate in their in their meetings, uh -huh. their, their uh, class meetings. And so I invited them, uh, the, the director of their group, to be a guest in some of our meetings. And, um, and so it has fostered a relationship. Okay, that's great. Um, seniors across the ocean are, are very much like seniors um, in, in Salem, <laughs> Beverly, and uh, surrounding areas. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, I was going to ask if there was anything like the Explorers Institute in the Boston area or in the North Shore area. There are. There's one at uh, U of Mass Boston, one at Tufts, and one at Brandeis. Uh, we are the only one on the North Shore. Uh. And, and I must say, we are the least expensive. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ours is a flat fee, membership fee. Others charge per credit hour. Oh, they so they're, a, they're getting credits, actually. They, no, but they, that's, oh, how well, that's, they, how they charge. that's how they charge. They have a membership fee and a credit hour charge. Um, and we don't do that. We've kept it very affordable. Uh-huh. All right. Well, very cool. You know, I'm just thinking about England, and, and I'm curious to know, do they have, they have the same kind of courses over there? Um, the, they do. Um, they, uh, I, they're a little more academic uh -huh. than we are. And, and truthfully, in the, in the last four years, I've tried to open the curriculum up. Uh -huh. Not to avoid the academics, but to include lifestyle subject areas, mm -hmm. because that's what people really, really want. And it gives us an adequate balance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you can, you can take something in a fun area, and you can, al you can also take a course about China. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it... it, it it gives people uh -huh. um, it gives people a nice balance uh -huh. in, in their learning. I imagine those lifestyle courses are m the more more discussion oriented than yeah. the more academic courses, and I think a lot of people are interested in that. A lot of people are interested in participatory learning. Yeah, yeah. Now doing things, and um, and that's what we're aiming for. Even if you're taking a lecture course, um, of course, we always encourage people to have a Q and A mm -hmm. at, at the end, and um, and to foster discussion, because then it fosters um, a little more integration and friendly uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, give and take. Uh -huh. And I'm curious to know the people who come to the Explorers, are they mostly from Salem? I'm wondering about the parking situation there and... Parking in down, we're in downtown Salem and parking, parking is our worst enemy in Salem. We, <laughs> well, uh, October particularly, <laughs> probably. We, uh, well, we close during Halloween week because uh. parking is absolutely impossible. But there's an enormous parking garage right across the street and two open parking lots mm -hmm. in front of our building. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are a lot of other points of interest in downtown Salem and you know, a lot of nice places to eat. Uh -huh. um, well, and the Essex Museum. Essex, um, yeah, Peabody Essex Pe Peabody. Museum mm -hmm. is only a couple of blocks away. And people will tell me, well, it gives me a chance to get out of the house, and we my, we meet friends, and and we go to classes, and then we socialize. We have lunch out, uh -huh. 
and it, it makes for a very pleasant uh -huh, day. Uh -huh. And so people are coming from the surrounding area, like Marblehead and... People from Marblehead, Swampscott, but we have people who come from Gloucester, uh -huh. uh, Salisbury, New Hampshire. We have several members who drive down from New Hampshire every week. Uh -huh. um, Peabody, Salem, Beverly, yeah. Swampscott, yeah. Lynn, Marblehead. Those are our, uh -huh. our most prevalent uh, uh -huh. communities. Uh -huh. And about how many members do you typically have? I suppose it varies somewhat. Well, we've lost quite a lot through the pandemic uh -huh. uh, years when we went all remote. Uh -huh. um, but we're, we're up a bit. We, we range about 350 members per, um, <laughs> per year. And we're hoping to build. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. Well, I see we're, we're getting close to the end of our time. So if we were going to recap here, I think one of the things I'd say is that uh, the points you raised about the Explorers Lifelong Learning Institute is that it really does help meet those uh, thriving together, or aging well issues of uh, Support, supporting your brain health by challenging your health, by encouraging you to, you know, think about new and different things. You know, it meets the, you know, kind of the need for uh, getting involved, you know, and having a social network that, that you can count on and uh, meeting new people. And so new opportunities come with meeting new people. And so those are good. Anything else you'd like to say about those items or uh, others? I think um, learning new things and socializing, getting yourself up and out every day uh -huh. uh, are just the most healthy aspects of of the aging process, uh -huh. and while we can still do it, why not? Do yeah, it? yeah, yeah. And I imagine that uh, there are people at home who perhaps can't get out that are looking at those. Uh, and to Zoom them, classes. we're bringing bringing our world into their homes. Uh huh. Um, I, there are people who belong to explorers with whom I speak or who are a even active on our board that I've never met uh, in person uh -huh. because they are not able to leave their homes uh -huh. for various uh -huh. health reasons, uh -huh. usually. Uh -huh. um, but we're friends. Uh -huh. And how do they feel about their involvement with the Explorers? They all say, thank goodness yeah. for it, particularly people who went through the pandemic. Uh -huh. It brought us together. Uh -huh. And if people didn't feel a strong need to socialize before the pandemic, they certainly came through the pandemic uh -huh. with that reality. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, that's, that's good. It's good that you're there. It's a good, it's a good offering. Um, Gay, I want to thank you for coming in today and telling us about the Explorers Institute and uh, you know maybe we'll do this again sometime. Well thank you for inviting me. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. All right thank you. Goodbye everybody. <laughs>